and then you, you stick it into the um, this platform, and then Instagram then sees it's live, and you'll see it come up on the desktop, and then you press go live on Instagram. I believe we're live now. Oh, good. We are, we are alive. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this super exciting GiveNX campaign. You know, today is the last day that you can register to vote, and we want to help you think through why you might do that and how you might do that. I'm Chris Kandaya, and I'm part of the GiveNX volunteer team. And uh, throughout our little broadcast, you're going to meet some fantastic people. But I've got to give you uh, an opportunity to meet our guest of honor, Jack Edwards. You might know Jack. Uh, he lives in New York, and it's boiling hot there at the moment, but he's still to join us because he's passionate about helping young people engage with voting. You might have seen Jack. He is an amazing content creator, and he's shaping what so many people around the world are reading today. Jack, thanks for joining us. Tell us what made you passionate about helping young people engage with politics. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I actually studied politics at A-level when I was at school. And it was the first time that I felt like I actually was really being engaged in the what was going on in politics in the country. And it made me realize the importance not only of voting and how we can impact policy once governments are already in place, but also why registering to vote is so important to make sure that you are represented in policy making and in manifesto making prior to elections and prior to governments actually being elected. So. Registering to vote is so important. If you want to be represented by policies, then you need to be on the electoral register. You're so right, man. Uh, we have we have some odd questions for you. You might be. Re I think you've been prepped in advance for us on this one, uh, <laughs> Jack. You know you're so well read in the world of fiction. So, if you had to pick a superpower that could only be used for making people register to vote, what would it be and why? You know what? I feel like people have to register to vote of their own accord. And so I, I, I would love to say like, oh, I would love invisibility so that I could take people to the to the um, website and, and sit and tap their fingers and make them um, That's a good one. register. But honestly, I would love to mind read. I think I would love because I think people have to go to the vote to, to register to vote of their own accord. But I think that um, I want people to be. I want to be able to read people's minds to understand why they haven't registered. Like, that's the thing I don't understand is why you want, why you would not register. So I want to be able to read your mind in order to be able to understand that. <laughs> that's so important. I was speaking to a Ukrainian teenager who's just turned eighteen, and she couldn't understand why so many young people across the United Kingdom haven't registered to vote, because she said, "Look, my dad is fighting a war to help." promote democracy. I want to be able to choose who's ruling my country. And so she couldn't believe it. So that, that mind reading ability would be very interesting. It would also make polling a lot easier, wouldn't it? That you could guess in advance what people are going to vote. That's true. And what about social media? You, you know, you're, you're an expert in that whole field. You're influencing what people are reading. How do you think uh, social media can play a role in encouraging young people to vote? I think that it's important for us all to show how we're getting involved and you know you don't have to say who you voted for we're not asking you to say who you voted for but you can just like show that you did vote encourage other people you know it's you have to remember that a lot of policy making right now does not apply to young people because they don't they, they if they think that young people won't vote they will not make policies that reflect young people and what young people want and so if you want to be represented then you need to be signing up to register um you need to be on the electoral register so we as young people need to be encouraging other people our peers to sign up because they don't they're not promoting to us you know it takes campaigns like given x to promote registering to vote for young people and so we have to kind of take the initiative um, upon ourselves uh, to encourage each other to to vote. So I think, yes, social media is one thing, but also asking your friends, oh, hey, like just casually, oh, have you registered to vote? You know, today's the last day. Um, just chucking in a group chat today is very, very, very important. That's so right. And, and it's a vicious circle, isn't it? If politicians don't think young people are going to bother to turn up to vote, then they don't make policies that make sense to young people, which dissuades more young people not to bother registering to vote and voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a vicious cycle. So, interestingly, this this time round, at least two parties have some pretty 
influential policies about young people. One party is suggesting that there should be national service for anyone over 18, and another party is suggesting that uh, people should be able to vote at 16. So it might be a bit of a game changer that, that people want to lean in and say, actually, I want to have a say about whether I'm going to do national service or whether I get to vote at 16. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to know who's watching. So why don't you tell us where in the world you are? Uh, Jack's in New York. Uh, I'm in London. So are some of my friends here you're going to meet in a second. But where are you? And um, if you have already registered to vote, we'd love to hear that you've done that. And if you haven't registered to vote uh, and Jack doesn't have that mind reading ability yet, why don't you tell us why not? What's what's stopping you? What What is it you're worried about? We can have a chance to ask questions to our amazing panel. In fact, why don't I introduce some of them <laughs> to you. Uh, sitting very patiently next to me is George. George, Hi, tell us what you do and um, why you're passionate about getting young people to vote. Um, Hi, everybody. I am a key member of the team at GibbonX. Uh, I've seen this wonderful campaign uh, build from, I, from idea to where we are now. Uh, as, a, as a young campaigner, I work across uh, the I Will movement, which is the largest movement of young change makers across the UK. So I have the beautiful privilege and pleasure of working with young people to make sure that their work, their voice is heard on a day to day basis. And there is no way other way of saying it. There is no other way of saying it unless you show up, unless you are seen. You, we cannot hold the people who perceivably have the power to account on the on 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 the on the policies and ideas that they have and they won't take account of us that's so right and george you've been doing an amazing job we did a, a an online voter registration for six formers mm -hmm. and uh, thanks for being part mm -hmm. of that we of had course. people voting up and down the country one of the questions we asked those young people are do you think your politicians are listening to you and to be honest, I think it was 98% thought they weren't. So here's indeed. your chance to influence them by registering to vote and just indeed. telling them that you're here. Indeed, 4.3 million, uh, pe million people are not that are eligible and not on the electoral roll. That's equivalent to this, the population of the second biggest city in the UK. That's a huge swathe of the people of, of our country. This block we're speaking to, our lives, the people on this stream can change the direction of policy. The and Yes, it's 4.3 million people in total, but it's one in three young people. Hmm. So, so it, and so, even if all of your friends say they want to register to vote and say they have, they'll just need that nudge because we know people that aren't registered to vote that do participate in their in in their schools, in their colleges, in their universities, and have a very active role. Hmm. Thanks, George. And the clock is ticking. At midnight tonight is your last moment to do it. So now is the time to really get involved and do this. We're going to talk you through the process of how you do it and maybe answer some of your questions. We'd love to know any questions you've got, put them in the chat. We have people joining us from Berlin and Leicester, York, Hampshire, London, South Africa and Denmark. So fantastic. A um, lot of you not watching the football, but watching this instead. Well done. Congratulations. And um, it might be a little bit late for a, a vote, uh, a, a voter registration from South Africa. Can they, can, I don't know if they can, but let's find out. Um, I want to introduce you to two more guests who are joining us, and then we'll take some of the questions that you have. Um, Claire, you are an amazing filmmaker. I saw some of your work earlier, just watching you in the back office there. Um, Claire, tell us a little bit about what you do, because not only are you a content creator, am I right, you're, you're currently studying medicine? <laughs> yes, that's true. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Claire. Um, I have the lovely privilege of working with George very closely um, as an ambassador for the I Will movement. And that's all about making sure that every young person knows that they have a voice and giving them the platform to use it. I think I had no doubts that I would be involved in Given X because this is what we're all about. I think um, the work that I do, whether that's uh, <laughs> in medicine <laughs> or in uh, my filmmaking, my writing, it's all about giving voices and giving platforms to other people. And um, this work, getting young people to vote, um, and knowing from the statistics that young people are the least um, engaged in voting currently, it 
all spoke to me and I'm really excited to be here and, and hopefully um, share some thoughts with everyone about how we can get everyone registered today. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us, Claire. And how did you get passionate about politics? Where did that come from? Oh, I think I think for me, getting passionate about politics was necessity. So I'm in London right now, but I'm originally from Manchester and Manchester has um, the one in three children and young people live under the poverty line. And so for um, me being in that community, you had to have your say. Um, my life, my say has this wonderful quote that if you don't do politics, politics will do you. And it's so, so important that you don't just vote for yourself, but you vote for people who can't vote as well. Yeah. And yeah. so I have always knew that this was something that I needed to get involved in and is close to my heart. That's well said, Claire. I, I find it interesting that often the politicians try to target you. You know, you're going to pay more tax or less tax or benefits or not benefits. But I love the fact that you're thinking compassionately. How can your voice help other people? What does it mean for people who might not have a voice in our political system? And young people particularly are there. I'm, I'm a foster parent. I'm an adoptive parent. And a lot of my voting is to do with how do we help children in the care system? They don't get a vote, and yet government has a huge say on their future. So I, I love that that compassionate drive. And um, India, you're working your magic behind the scenes and on camera at the same time. Uh, tell us a little bit about you and your story and how you come to be involved. Hi, yeah, so I'm India and I work for My Life, My Say, which is the machine behind the Given Acts campaign. Um, and I do comms and social, and um, my background is kind of digital marketing, but I'm just really passionate about young people being politically engaged. Um, I think it's really important that we are as active as we possibly can be as a collective of young people, because we have the power to shape the country and the world that we want to be in and the way that we interact with other countries around the world as well. So it's so, so important. And um, if you see me looking down a lot, it's because I'm running all of the tech um, for this and also keeping an eye on the comments to make sure that people who are in the comment section are getting the shout outs they deserve. Hey, Chris, 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 on, on, on that screen, Chris, you've got the two women that I want to be in and, 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 have, and have learned and have learned from uh, the most they 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 have so many skills to, between the two oh, of them running the ship um they're fantastic yeah, brilliant all right i'm going to give everyone on this on the stream a chance to ask some questions there's maybe some practical ones that you've got about how to register to vote um india is going to be watching closely when they come up but let me throw another question at jack um jack as a as a as someone who's widely read what do you think which character in fiction do you think might have been ahead of the game and got registered to vote as quickly as possible and which character might be most likely to wake up tomorrow and think flipping egg i missed the chance oh my god character um let me think i feel like marianne and normal people would be registered um i think she, <laughs> yeah she would be thinking about i think connell would be registered too actually because he is is from a background that maybe is looking for more representation and for more policies that might represent him. Um, so um, I'd like to think that they would both be registered to vote. Normal People is one of my favorite books. I'd like to think that all of my favorite characters would be would be registered. <laughs> and is there anyone that you think would have missed the boat, forgotten the opportunity, hasn't has missed all the social media, missed given X on the? Let's think. You know who boils my blood is. There's a character, I think, in one of Jane Austen's books, I think it's Northanger Abbey, called um, John Thorpe. And he, like, is the most infuriating character in all of fiction, in my humble opinion. Um, and I feel that he would be like, I don't need to vote. Like, this won't affect me, you know? <laughs> um, which is, to me at least, an incredibly annoying uh, Definitely. <laughs> so we should all be registered. <laughs> is he from quite a wealthy background? Is that is that why he doesn't think it's Yeah, happen? yeah. That is interesting, isn't it? That often the people least represented in the kind of electorate are the people who have less power mm. and less money and are probably more impacted by some of the mm. policies that our government makes. So that's a really interesting comment, mm. Jack. Thank you. I'm going to come back to you, Jack, and ask if you've got a book recommendation a little bit later for people who would like to lean in a bit more into politics. 
and maybe a book recommendation for people who have had enough and they just need a bit of a break. So let me come back to you. But um, are there some questions that have come up so far? Um, I know I've got one I'm going to throw to George. Um, what do you do if you are a university student and you might have registered to vote at uni, but now the election has been called, you're home because uni's over. What should you do? Well, well, the Electoral Commission says that you can't have two permanent addresses. Now, now, the, key, now the key word there is permanent. So you can have two addresses, but um, and 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 uh, the electoral and and it be it be um, it be known that you live at two addresses, but but one but one has to be your permanent, one has to be temporary. Now 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 what what the for ev for every student for every student um, for every student that would be different whether their university is their permanent home or, or not. Um, that's that's um, kind of what what kind of you need to check you, you you can only vote in in one location but but you can have but you can have two addresses uh, okay. and tonight at midnight and again I, i've worked out some weird things about apple phones being on a slightly different time zone to, to other platforms so if your phone says eleven fifty nine, it might already have passed but so don't leave it to the last minute if you are thinking about having a postal vote is it too late to register for that? Uh, no, the deadline for a postal vote is five o'clock tomorrow, but you have to be registered to vote before you before you can apply for a postal vote. So if you're not registered, you've only got literally a number of hours until one minute to midnight, midnight tonight, and then you've got the luxury of tomorrow to to register for for, for, a, for a postal vote. You can't register for a postal vote tomorrow if you've missed if you're not registered um, and you've missed the deadline this evening. And well, you know, on that, because I had to register for a postal vote, and actually, when I registered, for some reason, they couldn't verify my identity, and so they had to send a follow-up email, or I had to send a picture of my passport. So do not leave that to the last minute, because there may be a follow-up where you have to send additional information. So if you, I don't know what the policy is if you send it, like, moments before the deadline, yeah, but yeah. just make sure that you're not in a position where if they do need follow-up well, information... Well you know, said, Jack. We're, we're going to send people to go and register to vote in a minute, um, and we're going to want them to come back because we've got a very special guest that we're going to bring in who's waiting in the wings. So, <laughs> But you raise a good point about ID. Um, since the last general election, now if you're um, voting, you have to bring some ID. Yeah. What kind of ID might people need to bring, and is it too late to register to get ID if you haven't got ID? So... Uh Nobody can see it on this call, but I'm a wheelchair user. I was born with cerebral palsy, so I voted with my blue badge, which is a, which is photographic ID. There, there, there is a free ID that you can that you can apply for um, that that has been created specifically for this purpose. But um, any form of or many forms of photo ID, like a passport or a driving license, or and, and but but it but it but it but it is true. You need uh, to show your uh, uh, photo ID uh, at the polling station, but there are many different forms, and the deadline to the deadline to do that, I believe, is next week on the twenty sixth. I believe so. You have got time to apply for a photo ID if you don't have it already. And and seriously, there are no exceptions to this. The former Prime Minister Boris Johnson tried to vote in a local election and forgot his ID and was turned away. <laughs> like people didn't know his face, right? So seriously, make sure you've got some ID ready, otherwise you won't be able to vote no matter who you are. Even Jack, with his huge following on TikTok, they won't let him in. Um, we've got some good questions coming in now. Can you vote as an EU citizen? Does anyone have an answer to that? Is that something you know, George? Uh, I... I... You, the, play, the, the place to look for that the, the place to look for that is the electoral commission go to the electoral commission they have they have all the information that you that you need my my, my understanding is that you have to be a uh, you have to have residency in in the in britain or a designated commonwealth country um, in order to be able to vote but i would say that the electoral commission are the authority on this they are um, yeah um, I'm, I'm trying not to have a comment about Brexit, and if more young people had turned up, we might have had a different outcome, and therefore maybe EU citizens could have voted. Uh, is it the same with Commonwealth countries? Do you know if that's different, Jack? Uh, uh, George? 
the uh, uh, I I must must the, the 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 word the wording that the electoral commission uses is 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 designated uh, Commonwealth countries um, uh, now now um, so 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 I so I so I would assume so, so I would assume that there is there are some Commonwealth countries um, kind of what kind of if you have citizenship where you can apply uh, uh, to uh, to register but uh, as I say uh, the electoral commission is the place to go. Is it possible you just try and see what happens? If you're uncertain, just give it a go, you, and it will just reject you if there, you're not. There, not there, there, there is, there is, there is absolutely no harm in trying. Um, that I always say that the the act of voting is the first act of agency to demonstrate that you want to change society. The key statistic that always blows my mind, if I may say, Chris, is the same number of people that aren't registered to vote: four point three million. Is the same number of uh, children that currently live in poverty in this country, wow. and so it's. I don't believe that's a coincidence, um, and uh, people might disagree with me. But the, but as you said earlier, but as you said earlier, those that aren't registered to vote are those that most need their voice heard mm -hmm. and most need to, to to demand kind of different structures and different ways of having dialogue. But we need to engage in that dialogue, even if we don't really. Yeah. trust or like the options yes yes you can spoil your vote if you want to yeah even that's a statement that's really helpful okay so if someone is convinced tonight they would like to register to vote what should they do what's the process actually right now <laughs> well one of given x's key key slogans is personalized politics so i'm going to keep this very very simple it takes two minutes you can go on the uh, uk website actually given x have a have a have a uh, have a clear link which i think we're going to ship which I think we're going to share with you now. The only people, and it's vital information that most of us know off by heart about ourselves, the only tricky piece of information that they do need, but you could, which we all have and all can have access to, is our national insurance number. If you've got your national insurance number, you can do it in minutes. It's, it is simple. It takes longer to pull a pint at a pub. <laughs> Now, I don't think we can share links, which is very odd. So if someone Sorry. wants to find the site, how can they how can they do it? What should they do? Uh, I, I, I believe the link, uh, I, 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 I believe the website link is uh, gov.uk uh, forward slash register. Brilliant. And I think it's the link in our bio as well. So you can go there and click. And if you haven't, why not do it now? And, and, and just Google it. Google it. It's, it'll, be, it'll be the first thing that comes up. Great. And if you go, make sure you come back because I'm about to introduce a final, very special guest that you won't want to miss. But do go and do it now so you don't miss out. Have your voice heard in this election. If you're not sure who to vote for, there's some ways that we can get some information and we'll talk to you through that. Um, but use your vote, use it to make the world a better place, have your say and go and do it now. Now, for those of you that have already registered, uh, I'm very excited to introduce you to our last and uh, exciting guest. Uh, we're going to bring Sharon Gafka in. Sharon, good evening. Hey. Hi. Oh, we've just been having some stress with tech, so nothing new for me, but glad to be here. <laughs> we saw you for a second and now you've disappeared again, but oh, you're looking I'm fabulous. Back. You're looking fabulous, Sharon. <laughs> I think there's not enough room for all of us. So India, you might have to leave for a bit and we'll just have Sharon on. Um, no worries, one second. Here we go. We've got so many looking There you are. Us. Hey, do you know each other? Sharon, do you know Jack? Jack, maybe Sharon? We haven't met. No, we haven't. Well, I'm glad this is how we're meeting. <laughs> if you've been reading a book it's it, in the last couple of years, it's probably because Jack has been recommending it. He's been influencing what people have been reading all around the UK. And uh, he has a fantastic social media presence, inspiring lots of people to engage in reading. But Sharon, people might recognize you from a, a little TV show that you were on recently. Um, and I know it's you're, you're more than your TV personality. But just for those that don't know, um, Tell us a little bit about your experiences on Love Island and then how you come to be on a pro-democracy, pro-voting event like this. Yeah, so for people that, I actually find it weird that people still recognise me, but for people that do or don't know, um, I was an original cast member for the season seven of Love Island, which was actually the first 
pre-COVID season, so I feel like everybody watched it. Um, and I used to be a civil servant. I was um, working in central government for six and a half years before I went on to Love Island. So it was only natural for me to leave the show and kind of go back to doing what I love, which is um, being involved in politics. And I know you're particularly passionate. The thing you've given X about are women and girls. Can you talk a little bit about what's what's that about? Yeah, so um, I'm actually a Violence Against Women and Girls campaigner. I kind of started off um, with talking about drink spiking after being a survivor of a pretty horrific drink spiking myself. Um, and moving on, working with um, Britain's biggest domestic abuse organisation, which is Refuge, working on um, what I consider something I'm really passionate about, which is the online safety of young people and women and girls. Um, and actually, I think earlier this year, we saw our first ever conviction under the bill for somebody saying, Sending an unsolicited image. So, wow. um, yeah, like, there's so many more things to be tackled. There's only more things to come. But, yeah, that was kind of like the work that I was part of. That's fantastic, Sharon. We're so grateful that you're using the platform and opportunities you have to speak up for women and girls. And we're, we're right behind that campaign. So thank you. Now, imagine, Sharon, that someone's just kind of new to politics. They're, they've just registered to vote for the first time and they can't work out who they should vote for. We, we're not going to tell anyone who to vote for, but how should they go about finding out? What 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 helps you? Yeah, of course. Um, well, we know that, well, I know that young people have spoken to me a lot about how they're really struggling to come to the decision of who to vote for. Uh, and as somebody who's been working on campaigns in the run-up to the election, I have sat and read pretty much every single party manifesto back to back, and it is 80 pages long for each single party. Um, and nobody wants to do that, really. So I have said to people that it is perfectly OK to vote on a number of issues that are very important to you. So for me personally, I've always narrowed it down between three and five for my key issues so in this up and coming election violence against women and girls is something that's going to be one of my key priorities as well as the the nhs and our public services um because at the end of the day unfortunately you will probably never find a singular party or person that ticks off every single one of your boxes but if you focus more in the key issues mm. then it kind of alleviates a little bit of that pressure and, and helps you out a little bit that's really helpful. I've seen a number of these surveys where they ask you a few questions about the topics that really matter to you and then it kind of spits out which party manifesto might align more with you. That can be quite helpful. I, I like Jack's suggestion as well that you just begin to talk about it. Have the conversation with your mates, involve them in this. And, you know, there are still opportunities to watch some of the debates that are coming on online. Uh, it, you can catch them up on ITV Player or, I, or iPlayer and you can hear from the horse's mouth, if you like. I think that's important, isn't it? That we don't just follow what other people are saying, but we do a bit of research and make a decision for ourselves. Jack, what about you? When, when you came to vote for the first time, how did you go about working out which, which party to vote for? Yeah, I think um, through through reading manifestos, I think is really important. Um, what I will say is that one of the last election was while I was at university mm -hmm. and we all went to the polling booth together. It was actually a really fun day. I bumped into so many people I knew at the polling booth when we were voting. And if and the conversation of the day was, oh, have you been to vote yet? Where, which, you know, where, where were you voting or whatever? And, you know, some people were talking about politics specifically, but more people were just talking about being enfranchised and voting and being part of democracy. So you're gonna feel like a real idiot on the day if you have to turn around to your friends and say, I didn't register, I'm yeah. not voting, because they are going to be judging you. <laughs> <laughs> well said. And it's actually quite exciting. Once you cast your vote and you know go out and have some celebration, Ben and Jerry's ice cream or whatever you prefer, um, but then to go and watch, you know, watch the votes come in, watch the swing over to take place, knowing that you've got a stake in this actually makes the whole event so much more exciting. I'm, I'm planning an all-nighter to see what happens uh, in this election. People are talking about there being a historic result, so you wouldn't want to miss out. You were there. You could have, you could have had an influence on it. Every, every election night is theatre and a book, and 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 I think I, I, th I think they mark a line in the sand of our times, and and and. Uh, you know, the, the truth is politics will go on regardless of whether you of, of, of whether you of, of, of whether you vote or not. And and the you know, do not do not regret. Do not wake up the day after the election and think I could have done more. It was simple. It took seconds. Yeah, it's yeah. not about them. It's about you and what's best for you, 
your family and your friends. That's really helpful. Okay, Jack, I'm going to come to you for some book recommendations. If someone wants to lean in a little bit more into politics, have you got some books for us? And if well, I think like a good place to start is looking at books about people who are not enfranchised and people who um, are not able to vote. You know, we have like so many dystopias. You can think of things like The Hunger Games, but also The Handmaid's Tale, 1984, mm. Fahrenheit 451, which are about what happens in a society when you don't have the right to vote um, and you don't have the ability to um have a say on what's going on in politics and when you're not represented by the people in charge so i think that that is probably what i would recommend reading because it kind of is galvanizing it does kind of um make you feel pumped to actually go and contribute and to have your say and to see that directly reflected in the people who are elected those are great recommendations um, and what about if someone says okay i am following the news 24 7 i need something to help me switch off is there anything you reckon we should be reading just for a bit of light relief Sure. Um, Summer Reads, I would say there's this book called The Ministry of Time, which is um, about the ethics of time travel, if it were to be possible. Um, so it's a bit of like speculative fiction, sci-fi. Um, there's Blue Sisters, which is about sisterhood and friendship. It's set in London, Paris, New York and L.A. Um, lots of really fun, interesting characters who have explosive fights. And it's like being a, a fly on the wall of like, the best reality show ever. Um, and then Evenings and Weekends is set in London. It's all about um, different types of people who live in London. There's also a whale who is stuck in the Thames and there's so much going on, but um, it's so human and it's just about what it is to live and to love and be loved. Um, and it's also an ode to the city of London and to oh, accessibility as well. So those would be my three for this summer. They are fantastic recommendations. I, I need a bit of therapy. I watched that Sharks Under Paris film. <laughs> A whale in the Thames sounds a lot calmer. So I think that they have the in the story. There's a whale stuck in the Thames, and the news reporter who's explaining it looks a lot like Diana, Princess of Wales, and so they call her the, the, the Princess of Wales. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Very good. And uh, last words from George, and then Sharon, and then Jack, and then me. So um, George, any, any last words? Someone's on the fence. Should they do this or not? How would you encourage them? Sounds kind of menacing, like any last words. <laughs> like what's, a, what's about to happen? <laughs> We're coming to an end of our broadcast, oh, yeah. that's all, not the end of well, the world. Any, <laughs> any, any last words? Um, I, I would simply say that you, people have fought and died for the right to vote. You know, the given exit, Given X campaign is not the first uh, campaign to try and get people to register to vote. It is unique. It is brilliant. There's 300 organisations that have been involved today. But this struggle goes on. Mm. And if you want to talk about uh, foreign policy, there are, there, 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 there are many people across the world that would like, like for it to be as easy it is, as it is to register to vote for it only to take uh, minutes. Mm. And so um, do it, have your say, uh, represent those that you love, and also kind of rep represent those that don't have a voice. Perhaps Brilliant, the George. homeless or, or you know, care experienced young people. Um, do it with them in mind as well. That's fantastic, George. I, I watched the 80th celebration of D-Day and just thinking about teenagers, maybe <laughs> the same age as some of you that are watching, who, who landed on those beaches to try and liberate Europe from the Nazis. They were doing that so we'd have the choice to be able to choose who's leading our country. So what, what a great challenge. Uh, how about uh, you, Sharon? Any um, final comments before we come to the end of our broadcast? Yeah, of course. I'm um, hearing Jack talk about book recommendations. Maybe my next challenge is to write a book to get more young people yeah. interested in politics. So maybe I've given myself a challenge. Send in my way. I want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will make sure you're the first person on that list to get one. But um, for me, I, I did a piece, well, I, I did a piece with a journalist for the Daily Mirror on Given X. And I said that even at this current moment in time, today itself, if you do not know exactly which direction you want to vote in by not registering before midnight tonight, you are removing that yourself from that luxury of choice on the 4th of July. Yeah. If, you get, if you register today and you get to the 4th of July, or like between now and the 4th of July, you decide, yeah. or even on the day you decide randomly between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., you still can make that choice, but if you don't register today, you've you've eliminated that choice yourself. Okay. And as some as somebody who um grew up with three court like three 
of my grandparents grew up in countries where democracy wasn't something they necessarily had. So I grew up with the understanding that it was I was lucky to be able to vote, to get up and vote and vote freely, especially as a woman. So, you know, don't take that luxury for granted. Fantastic, Sharon. Brilliant. And I know you've got a new thing you're hoping people are voting for you for. I think you're headed for a, a, an important pageant. You want to just share briefly about that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, on polling day, I will actually not be at home. Um, I will be for the first day of Miss Universe Great Britain. So I have been asking people to vote for, for me for that. Um, hopefully at the next election, it will be for the election. But I have actually already registered and got my approval for my postal vote as well. So um, I will definitely be voting even if I'm not at home. Excellent. Good luck. Well, we wish you all the best with that. We know that you use your platform to help uh, elevate the voices of women and girls and and uh, so all the best in the Miss Universe competition and Jack what, what about you what do you want to say to those that are still deciding whether to vote or not yeah I uh, also likewise just um, got my approval for my postal vote um, and like I said earlier in the stream make sure you do register for that early because I had to send another round of um, ID just to make sure I 100% got approved um, and they can verify that it was me. <laughs> so um, make sure you do that. Don't delay on registering for a postal vote as well if you need one. Um, but yeah, I think if you are not on the electoral register, if young people especially are not on the electoral register, then politicians will not make policies that accommodate for you, account for you, because they're not interested in you if you won't be voting. All they want is votes on election day. So policies for you will only happen if you are on the electoral register. So um, register to vote today right now brilliant. brilliant jack thank you so much for being part of this for, for, having me. for being generous with your streams and fantastic book recommendations i'm going to be following you now on all the channels <laughs> um, i'm definitely going to read that wales in the what was it what was it called weekends and evenings and weekends evenings and weekends you've you've got a, a book a book buyer in me <laughs> but friends thank you so much for joining us you still have just about uh, four hours and 40 minutes to register to vote. So don't miss the opportunity. You've heard it uh, from George that this is your moment, your chance. Don't regret it the next day. Uh, you've heard it from Sharon that you've got an opportunity to speak up about the issues that matter to you. And you've heard it from Jack. And so from me to you, happy voting, happy registration. Let's make a difference. Let's make this world a better place for the people that need us to speak up for them. For me, I'm passionate about children in care and refugees. That's what I give an X about. What is it that you give an X about? Use your vote to make the world a better place. Hopefully see you again. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks to all our guests. Thanks to India and Claire for their contributions too. And we look forward to seeing you very soon. Good night.